About three and a half years ago, I spent three nights and four days in Pyongyang, North Korea. So first off, the way to get into North Korea for anyone, you have to go on an organized group trip. I went with a company called Koryo Tours. There are a couple other companies that take you to North Korea. But before you go, you have to attend a mandatory briefing in China. Mine was in Beijing. Some of them are in Shanghai or other cities. And basically they run through uh, all the do's and don'ts of what you can and cannot do in North Korea. 99% of it is the don'ts because it's very strict. Um, and if you break any of the rules, you will face severe consequences. Uh, quickly, the rules are you cannot speak of the past, current or future leaders. Uh, it's a big no-no. Uh, you cannot take any pictures of construction because it looks like the country is not perfect and you must not leave the tour group at any time. If you take any pictures of the leaders, uh, like statues or, or pictures, they have to be in the full frame of the camera. You can't cut off their face. So I arrive in Shanghai, meet the other group members. There was, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 people in my group. I was definitely the only American. Um, I was really nervous. This was before I had been to other intense countries. All right, we are getting ready to board our flight to Pyongyang. Where are we going, Jeremy? North Korea. North I mean, Korea. Sorry. The tour company that you sign up with will get you the visa. So basically you don't have to do any paperwork beforehand. They give you this little blue passport visa thing and you carry that with you the whole trip in North Korea. So it's all set and the tour price includes round trip flights from Beijing to Pyongyang and back. So that's pretty much all for the preparation. And then the flight to get there, you're on like a 1960 Soviet airplane on Koryo Airlines. It's the only North Korean airline and they give you this really nasty burger to eat on the plane and it's really interesting uh, the flight. I felt like we were gonna crash out of the sky but sure enough we landed in North Korea and uh, got my passport stamp. We made it. So quickly to recap um, the four days that I had there. You're on a bus right and so you're touring around with people. You have a local tour guide and an another tour guide within the company and you do the same kind of loop around Pyongyang and yes it does feel very staged they're only taking you to areas that they want you to see. We visited all the main squares, the plazas. Uh, we went to some restaurants. Um, it's not really that exciting. It's always dark and gloomy and, and there's a lot of people out walking around, but always curious like where they're going because there's no street signs. Like you don't see like hospital or, or market. Like maybe people just know where they are. Um, but it's really strange. You just have like all these big buildings. Most of them are empty. Uh, one of the tallest hotels in the world is this pyramid thing and it's completely empty inside. So you do get this really weird feeling that everything is staged. We went to several museums which were extremely biased and anti-American but it was still really interesting to go and, and uh, learn about it. My favorite part about uh, my trip to North Korea is I strategically went during the annual Pyongyang Marathon. So it's a normal marathon that goes through the streets of Pyongyang and you have international racers. I'm not a runner, so I signed up for a 10K, but I saw it as a unique opportunity to be away from the tour guides only for this four hour period and kind of walk uh, in the streets and talk to the people on the sidelines. And that's exactly what I did. And it was really cool because I can speak Korean as I told you, it's the same language in the North it's a little bit different, but the, the roots are the same. And so I was high-fiving kids on the street, talking to them, how are you? I told them I'm from the States and, and how do you feel about meeting an American? And that was really the coolest experience for me was to be on my own in the streets of Pyongyang, talking to North Koreans. And then after the marathon, everybody was celebrating and drinking beer from vendors on the streets. So it was a very festive atmosphere and something that um, I surely didn't expect in North Korea. My other favorite experience in all of Pyongyang was taking the metro. So actually in Pyongyang, it's the deepest underground public transportation system in the world. It literally takes like three full minutes on an escalator to go from street level all the way down until you reach like these bunkers, which are, uh, I believe, Soviet built public transportation system. And we took six or seven stops um, and it was the coolest experience just to be completely immersed in North Korean culture with people um, living their daily lives. And yes, we got a lot of stairs and everything, but that was really a memorable experience for me. And then our hotel, once you get to the hotel at night, uh, around 7 p.m., they lock the doors and you are not able to leave at all for any reason. But thankfully, the hotel has really nice views, a revolving restaurant on the top, pool table, bowling alley, TVs, no internet. It was really like, you didn't need to go anywhere else when you got to the hotel. I al always reflect on my trip there and thinking about I was so young and naive at the time, but it was just surreal to, to think about actually walking on the streets 
of the world's most isolated country. A few other times I was able to interact with uh, North Koreans, specifically in my hotel and in some of the other restaurants around town. Uh, you were able to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Some of them even speak English because they learned in the, the universities there. But overall, you're mostly with the group and having this really um, surreal experience together. Nobody's really happy walking around. They look down at the ground. They don't smile that much at you. There's not that many things to do. It is very much controlled society and I just feel bad for the people there. And since I've left North Korea, I've met uh, a handful of North Korean refugees um, and I've done three or four videos on my channel if you guys have seen them before and I really feel for them they all have told me similar stories about how they've had to escape and how brutal the regime was and how their family uh, is in danger because they've left and how they have no intention to go back and I really do feel bad because you know we all can't choose where we're born you know, I'm very lucky and thankful that I, I was born in the United States of America and I feel bad for people who are just born in North Korea and they don't have a choice and they have to literally figure out a way to leave the country. So it's very sad. Obviously, there are some severe human rights issues in North Korea. I'm not going to get too into right now because um, it gets very political, but I definitely do not support them. I wanted to just um, tell this story and leave an open conversation for you guys to let me know what your thoughts are on North Korea in general. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever thought about going there? What are your thoughts about the regime? What needs to change in order for North Korea to hopefully make peace with South Korea, which would be an incredible thing if we can see that in our lifetime. And that's pretty much it, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in to this video. And that's it, guys. Hit me up on Instagram, at Drabinsky, to follow my trips live. Don't forget to text me, as I told you at the beginning, and I will catch you guys later. Thank you. Love you all. Peace. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please follow this page and make sure to turn on all notifications so you can join me as I take you to every single country in the world.